people. So today I've got a very special guest star with me. I've got William Ickhoff, who was a research scientist for 45 years and he tried to explain to me what he did and I thought it would be easier just to ask him. So welcome William. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so do you want to first of all just explain a little bit about what you, you yeah. know, what you did through your, your long career in science? Yeah, I started off about 45 years ago as an apprentice in Germany in a very large chemical factory. Wow. Where I learned a lot and got out <laughs> as soon as I had a chance. <laughs> And then got into the food industry and from there moved to Australia, worked in various industries, ended up through various jobs in the food industry in a research environment at a couple of different universities doing natural products research, largely in the health related field, like herbal medicines. Yeah, I remember you told me once that you uh, had a lot to do with standardising the quality of sandalwood, I think. Yeah, we started off setting up an institute, a privately funded institute to research Australian natural products like tea tree oil, oh, okay. sandalwood oil, a whole bunch of different eucalyptus oils for various industries, the health industry, the cosmetics industry, the pharmaceutical industry. So there's a whole range of clients interested parties from the agricultural part to the very high-tech scientific part including hospitals medical work yeah. okay um, so i mean of course for some people it's just interesting now knowing how much science goes into natural health products but you know, the other thing is is that you know i know that intuition is very important in science but for a lot of people they see science and intuition as very separate well, my... <laughs> yes, I am asking you what your view is. <laughs> my career has, in hindsight, been based on pure intuition. Yeah. It starts with bouncing off from the wrong kind of jobs. I was interested <laughs> in doing electronics and technology, watchmaking type of stuff, which I realised now would have killed me within 10 years. <laughs> so... I got through some coincidences into chemistry, which I wasn't really interested in, but I found out that it was a very good broad base for my life's work, basically. Okay. So I branched so, out from there and, yeah. Okay, great. So, but what is your idea of what intuition is? Um, intuition for me came from a bodily, physical level. Uh, I do a lot of construction work, building work, hands-on, heavy lifting, shovels, hammers, that kind of stuff. That doesn't all sound very scientific. Of, it's all about <laughs> laboratory building and cost ah, saving. I see. Okay. Like you may have to fashion the old hole in the brick wall yourself because you can't afford to get the builders in, or if you want to get it right, better do it yourself. That's part of intuition when you see somebody they're obviously going to get it wrong and yeah. say, like, excuse me, while I have a helping hand here. So okay. it was sort of a negative feedback type situation where I could sense something was going to go wrong here and just calling, calling it off. Okay. Like sending the builders home or sending colleagues out of a room because they were obviously going to come unstuck, which can be quite dangerous and expensive. So uh, then... Yes. <laughs> having a closer look at the situation and then just fixing things and this became a habit um, to the point where people would say well how come you can fix this where did you learn this and I had to think about where did I learn this I didn't learn this anywhere it's sort of an innate sense of you know other people would say oh, well this should work you know but I have a way of saying well why isn't this working and there's usually little hints and, 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 and clues available that the universe, for lack of better words, will hand you on the platter if you're prepared to, to listen. Well, of course, yeah. some people would say that intuition, it's, it's within the word itself, you know, mm. tuition or learning that comes yeah. from yeah. inside. And it yeah. seems like that's what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But when you're saying that you felt it very much through your body, it, was it a sort of like a, a feeling of alignment in the sense of 
your body felt stressed when it was out of alignment and relaxed when you were in alignment or was it some other sense? It was gross and involved a lot of blood and suffering because I wouldn't... That doesn't sound like intuition, that just sounds nasty. <laughs> <laughs> so whenever I was doing something, i take things to the edge and then there was blood. And from that I learned that there is a little, a bunch of clues that come to you before there's blood. It says, right. look, this is not how you should hold a chisel. Right. This is the wrong kind of screwdriver. This bit of metal is going to come off and it's going to hurt. And I learned to listen to that. Right. So, but, and of course that would be the natural question. It's like, so how do you know then that that is, that that is a different thing to just simple experience? teaching you not to go about things in a rather gory fashion. The little voice. The little you know, voice. Like I, the, the little William on William's shoulder. Well, I would think it's largely my body having a voice of its own. When I call that intuition. Yeah. Sorts. Okay. Um, an example is, I, I've done a lot of building work, like mm -hmm. heavy construction. Nothing mm -hmm. to do with research, but like a wheelbarrow full of Besser blocks, you know, how many blocks can I move in one go? Plenty. Right. Until my hip gave way, my knees gave way, and I had enforced rest. Until I learned to listen to this little voice, and I said, well, maybe you should only put 12 blocks in there, or bags of cement, and not 24. Okay. So, that then sounds like you're, you're saying that their intuition, you know, because for me, intuition, that's one of the functions of intuition, is to help us find most elegant path yeah. and that's not just elegant path in life but it's the most elegant path as how in how to move you know a hundred better blocks or whatever you're doing is is this what you would agree with um to me it's it's a fairly broad field when it comes to intuition well, can you, of course can you narrow it down there, for there, us a little there's a there's a big gap between loading bricks into a wheelbarrow and moving it uphill and looking at somebody else's research paper that involves like maybe five hundred thousand dollars of funding that needs yeah. to be spent wisely but the same mechanism is at play here it's not my body so much involved but more like the research budget for the next five years and you can easily blow that yes you now i've learned i can sit down with someone else's research papers and look through it and say look i feel, sense, think that we're going to come on stuff right there, mm -hmm. which is usually in week three of a three-year project. <laughs> <laughs> and people, right. people would look at me and they go, whoa, 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 what do, what do you mean? We've, we've done this project right up for the last three years and this is what we're going to do. And I'm going, not a good idea. Now, explaining something like that is hard because I'm not all that familiar with the detail of the project but through my experience people learn to listen to me because if I give some advice it's usually advice given to save the money so yeah. look, intuition to me is it's not brain thing I don't work things out I don't do the figures I don't do the logic of this song it's like walking through an obstacle field and just dodging and exactly. turning and it's about avoiding the, the navigating that yeah, elegant yeah. path. Yeah. And they're quite okay. noticeable, these obstacles, but not necessarily linear or logical. No, okay, mm -hmm. good. But, uh, we, and of course, a lot of people would, you know, some people wouldn't be, but some people might be really surprised to find just how important that is in science. But as you said, if you blow, if you blow your grant or you blow your research budget, well, then where are you? You know, I was involved in rather large scale chemistry, like we're talking about like 500 litre distillation equipment. <laughs> like 500 litres of alcohol can make an awful mess out of your three story <laughs> building if, it's, if it catches on fire. So scoping something like that, building it and then training staff to use this kind of equipment is rather, you know, it, it carries a lot of responsibility and you can't write that off as you know, people always want instructions. Can we have instructions here? Can we have a protocol? Can we have safe work procedures? None of that will cover it. You have to find the right person who has the, the, the whereabouts of doing this kind of work. That's the first thing because you can 
waste an awful lot of time people reading instructions. So it's okay. like picking the right person for the job and then passing them on. So it, it's a yeah. hands-on so, so stuff. If because you've had this long experience and of both the advantages and disadvantages in some ways of working with intuition or not listening to your intuition in science, have you got any tips or tricks that you'd like to share with people about how to learn to listen to your intuition better? Or do they just have to wait till the blood comes? The only hands-on advice I have is to people who really do physical work and listen to those little they're not voices in your head, it's usually your body screaming about three minutes before the blood comes out and you listen. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a mental process. Um, your body has a mind and a brain of its own and it knows when things go wrong. So, so that's part of body. intuition to me. And then the, the other kind of intuition using work, you know, it's like you make big decisions occasionally and I've had a fairly steady stream of employment. I stick with a job because I've picked the right job to start with. I don't change jobs every two years. Employers have, might have a different idea, but then I still stick with my job. The employers might change, but the job stays the same. So I found that uh, there's, there's, there's consistency in that. So find out what you're good at resonates with your whole being and then build on that yeah well it makes sense to me like if because you know i talk a lot about with intuition is it's internal alignment like connecting yeah. to yourself and once you've got that and that's your stable operating base yeah. then intuition is to help you navigate that external yeah. alignment so yeah absolutely that makes sense to me and so to, it, to some people it would look like magic or psychic stuff like looking at a situation and saying what will this look like in 10 years time or mm -hmm. five years time we're tuning into something entirely different i would still call it intuition like you meet your new partner your person that you're going to marry you look at him or her and you go what is this going to look like in 10 or 20 years time scary stuff but <laughs> <laughs> indeed so is there any particular story about that you would like to share about your intuition? Or not, you don't have to, but if there's um, a story that you've got that, you know, that yeah, you demonstrates what intuition it means for you in your life. Some right? very hands-on stuff, like I got very good at repairing scientific instruments by default, not because I wanted to, but simply financial restraints are such in the university and I've worked at universities for 35 years now it's like mm -hmm. a long time and there's been constant funding cuts constant over 35 years you think there'd be nothing left mm -hmm. well most people work on contracts now nobody gets permanent jobs anymore that's all part of that mm -hmm. so um so cost saving involves having a very expensive piece of equipment on the bench which may be worth hundred thousand or five hundred thousand or a couple of million dollars to get a service person in to fix this damn thing because the results aren't right can easily cost you ten twelve twenty five thousand dollars the money is just not there uh -huh. so normally the plug is pulled and that's the end of that project you know this is where I come in I say well let's see what's wrong with this and people will say well what do you know about this thing? I said, well, I've fixed a few things like that. So let's take the covers off. And so there's a boss there with this 500,000 instrument shivering and shaking. <laughs> and usually after about 15 minutes, the damn thing works again because some wire came off. Mm. Now, how do I know that? Intuition. And over time, this has become quite a game. Well, to me, <laughs> I basically know nothing about these instruments. This com comes from a completely brand different branch of science, like genetics. They have a machine that normally goes ping when you press the button or the minister comes in. It doesn't go ping anymore. Now, what can we do about this? So, it's run on some complex software that I will never understand. <laughs> they have one or two operators that can run this thing. 
So they have to show me what this thing actually do does besides going ping. So that I have to stand there with them and say, look, what do you do on this thing? And they say, well, it doesn't work, so I can't show you. I said, what? Well, show me what you normally do. So they get on the keyboard, turn the thing on, and I said, show me exactly, but it doesn't work. I said, show me which keys you press, but, but it doesn't work. And so slowly, again, once more, show me what you would normally do and then tell me what's happened. So they go through this process of pressing the keys and by that time, I usually have a fair idea where it's gone wrong. This could be operator error, or as I said, a wire has come off or a little motor fell off its little mount and so I, I can fix these things. And yeah. it sounds a bit like a fairy tale, but no, it makes it's a sense. daily... Makes sense to me, because intuition for me, a big part of it is being able to sense the integrity of things. Yeah. So you seem to have, you know, machine this, this intuition. Is, this is purely <laughs> about integrity of the thing. Yeah. And it can involve a, a lot of things. And yes, with time, there's experience. Yeah. And most technicians would have that experience after years. Mm. You, know, you, you work in the field for 30 years, you know what can go wrong. With yes, thing. of course. And if they can't fix this, people call me. And then <laughs> what to say about my experience? Not a lot because I don't know these things. It's a strange instrument to me, but I can still manage to fix it. Okay. So I have a bit of a reputation in the industry. <laughs> And so it goes towards, like, it's not always a miracle cure. It's, sometimes I will just say to the people, look, just throw it away. And they go, well, what do you mean? It can't be fixed. Yeah. It's also intuition. It cannot be fixed. And they go, oh, no, no, we'll send it in. We'll have it refurbished. And two months later, they get it back. It still doesn't work. And it cost them 50 grand. And then they throw it away. <laughs> yes. Okay. Very technical stuff. Very basic. But... I work at the cutting edge of technology. Yeah. You know, we're looking at this stuff they're doing today with COVID-19 and testing routines. I fix these machines. Mm. I take the covers off and the numbers don't come out right on the computer printout. I go in there and make sure that this little wheel that's supposed to go around actually does go around. Yes. So, <laughs> of course, I mean, to me, I, I guess I love that. That is like, because a lot of people think that once you've got a machine, Things like intuition, you know, because they're so airy fairy, they don't come into it, but obviously, as you said, that they do. So, thank you very much for joining us today and for sharing your insights on intuition and what machines and science. So, I hope you all found that interesting and you learned something. And as always, until next time, remember that you're brilliant.